tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. I would uh, love to introduce our first guest of the day. She is the acting director at the Mindanao State University Eligan Institute of Technology for the Institute for Peace and Development in Mindanao. And she's also an assistant professor of the Department of Political Science in the same university. So without further ado, I would like to introduce to you Miss Yasmira Moner. Hi, Miss Yasmira. Hi, Erica! Hello oh. sa ating mga viewers. Allow me to greet you. The universal uh, greetings in Islam. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May peace be upon us all. And I hope that we are all safe and staying healthy because COVID-19 is very much out there. So, thank you so much for having me here, Erica. Um, as I mentioned a while ago, you are the assistant director for MSU IIT. But this what did you do po to get to where you are now? Where did you study? And then you study here? Yeah, actually, uh, it's, it's pretty much a journey for me, you know, uh, being uh, considered to be part of a minority in a, uh, in, 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 in a country that is um, described no, uh, as uh, said to be a quote-unquote Catholic country in Asia. So, um, allow me to say this, that my journey in doing uh, advocacy for interreligious dialogue, for empowerment of women, and, you know, um, uh, a rights-based approach to peace building and conflict transformation started when I was high school. Um, I was actually, you know, I'm, I, 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 growing up, I was told that um, I, I have to basically um, uh, um, uh, prove myself, you know, and, 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 that's according to what my faith and traditions, uh, as well as what I, as well as my character, and my, and and that defines me as a person. Let me ask you, uh, what is mm -hmm. World Job Day exactly? Okay, the the World Job Day is not, it's not basically a a form, uh, what you call this, a, a formalistic, no, it's it's not a UN resolution, rather it's a global civic campaign uh, uh, which started in the United States right after the, as you can see, right after the 9-11 attacks. And, and, and it was created by a Muslim, uh, an American Muslim, Najma Khan, in 2013 to basically, she started a campaign as a solidarity movement in order to mainstream uh, the, the um, the, the uh, common issues and in concerns of Muslim women uh, living across the globe with uh, the same sentiments. Of course, there's this there's this phenomenon of Islamophobia, especially right after that 9/11 attacks, and 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 the issues of the pertaining about Muslim women being oppressed, quote unquote, and that they are actually um, by being just a Muslim, they they are not free to do. Uh, and pursue their goals, and I think that's that's the importance of the World Hijab Day. It's it's basically raising awareness on the plight of not just Muslim women, but women uh, from different uh, colors and creed and religions. And, and and indeed, it's a global campaign, and that's why it is it it, it is not something that is just tied up to religion, uh, religious interpretation, but it's more of a civic, uh, global action for women with women. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Um, the world interface harmony. What what does it really celebrate? I think um, the the history behind it, and it's that's why it's very significant. Is that one of the head of states, you know, a uh, head of a sovereign nation who proposed it is a Muslim from a Muslim country, Jordan. It was King Abdullah II of Jordan who propose it, that there should be a symbolic global celebration of Interfaith Harmony Week so as to educate, you know, and to remind humanity about our, um, about the diversity of our faith traditions and our, um, the beauty of our cultures and societies in that uh, with that differences, um, there are more similarities that our faith traditions is also what bridges us together because the common anchor is faith and you know faith is something that is more than the material value of things in 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 in, in the, and and uh 
it's something that can be seen by eyes but it's it's that feeling of um, embracing one another because we are after all uh, uh, um, uh, what you call this no uh, we are we we believe in something bigger than ourselves that there is one supreme being uh, and the, the, there are so many ways of um, uh, of trying to uh, show uh, our love for the divine and and that through compassion and mercy and and global solidarity we are able to anchor and strengthen our humanity and i think that's very important in a world where there is so much divisiveness you know consumerism there's so much excesses and 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 you know like uh, i think we need to decenter from a very uh, uh from you know th th this whole idea of modernization you know of uh, reason over faith that kind of thing or that individual over community um i think with celebrations like this we 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 um bring ourselves to the reality that um, that there's beauty in diversity and that there's harmony in recognizing that women not, women not look alike like we are beautifully you know like we're rainbows you know in terms of our skin color creed religion uh, our gender uh, orientation and our sexuality but at the end of the day we are all children of God and we should love each other and have mercy you know, within each other and I always remind myself like as a Muslim and as a, as a citizen of the world like I always say you know um, uh, what drives me to do this advocacy is uh, one of the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad when uh, when he peace be upon him when he when he said um, or it, even in the Quran that actually says there that um, the, the the prophet of Islam was sent not just as a mercy to the Muslims but as mercy to the world and so I think that particular universal value in Islam where you are not supposed to discriminate people because of their religion because of their gender or because of their political orientation should that's my that's my philosophy and that's my basic guide in this highly uh, complex and network society we live in and, and it, especially now that you know it's, it's so hard you know when when the norm is that we have to physically distance uh, so that we could keep yes. ourselves healthy it's very it's very hard you know we are yeah. social beings after all <laughs> so growing up you mentioned a while ago you attended a uh, Catholic um, high school and um, mm -hmm. throughout the mm -hmm. years you always hear um, yeah. negative mm -hmm. points about being um, a Muslim woman. How did you um, overcome that? I, I don't know, maybe there might be somebody watching right now and is struggling mm -hmm. with um, their mm -hmm. eyes. There are people still struggling with, mm -hmm. with that. So how were you able to overcome that? Especially beyond the uh, narratives that that is uh, the, the headlines, we have to go beyond the headlines. Like we really have to um, educate ourselves. We need to relieve and we need to rediscover our history as being told by our um, community. And it's high time that we look at from bottoms up, because and this is I think uh, we are speaking here from the vantage point of privilege because probably Erica one would say like you know yes Mira could just say that because he's you know she's uh, she she graduated college you know she can speak in the language of the uh, global lingua franca or that you know he can she can say that because she's in a privileged position but this is this privileged position is something also that is our responsibility because because you are given such uh, I think role in terms of changing or transforming, influencing the the public opinion in the way, in 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 the way that it's not us versus them. You we, you see how language and you see how in terms of when you um, when you relate the history of your of your people, you know, of me being a Muslim in a, in, a, in a very Christianized country like the Philippines, I mean, historically, and then the Mindanao, which which used to be very, called to be, you know, uh, Islamic Philippines in some books, uh, Muslim Mindanao is referred to as the bastion of Islamization in the country. And had it been that, there was even this article, had it been that 
uh, the, the the Magellan expedition was delayed, then we won't have a moral problem, rather a Christian problem, quote unquote. And so this kind, I think, of conversation, this has to be sustained. This has to be written. And that's why I'm in the academy because I wanted to continue the conversation. And I wanted to engage more in a um, deep... Hum- Her name is Najma Maroho. Hi, Najma! Hello po, um, I am Najma Maroham. Yes, I am a 20-year-old entrepreneur from Bacor, Park Cavite. And okay, thank you so, so much for inviting me. <laughs> thank you also for accepting. You mentioned that to me uh, a couple of days ago that you have a couple of passion projects. So why why don't we uh, talk about your passion projects? Maybe you could share to us what the what projects you've done and your current Okay, so um, back in 2018, dito nag-spike yung entrepreneurial um, heart ko eh. Entrepreneurial mindset, business mindset, kumbaga. So, nag-start ako ng isang small way of creating an online Islamic marketplace. So, when we say Islamic marketplace, it's just like, um, can I mention brands? <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Can I mention brands? Okay. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Just like Shopee or Lazada na merong um, wide variety of products with different sellers and buyers like that. So, ang aim ko po sana magkaroon ng Shopee or Lazada pero Muslim products version. So, yun po talaga yung pinaka uh, one of my dreams. And sinabi since it's World Hijab Day, ang main uh, aside from uh, ilang sa mga aim ng World Hijab Day is to encourage um non-Muslims too, na like you, na mag-try na hijab, like that. Pero, hindi naman lahat alam kung saan makakabili, di ba? Kayo po ba? Alam niyo saan bilihan ng mga hijab like this? Here in Manila? Yeah, here in Manila. Parang wala. I, I can't remember. Because I know we had to buy because we, mm-hmm. again, went to Tawi-Tawi. So, I don't know. I'm not quite sure where we bought exactly. Pero, you don't really see that a lot in the market yeah. yes yes mm-hmm. stay tuned for the next episode only here on V81 radio manila